Hi all, Nick Silverstein here. Uh, I thought I'd make a nice little video on how to install Windows XP in 2015 under Yosemite in boot camp on a MacBook Pro from early 2008. Now this will work, um, let me roll the intro and then we'll get started. So as you can see, this is a new MacBook. Um, basically, I bought a new MacBook. Um, I got it on Amazon. It was a real hassle getting this particular model, but after all the hassle, you know, it 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 came, you know, and it's the right one. But not not exactly what I wanted, but still still good MacBook. Um, this is an early 2008 MacBook. Um, it's 2.4 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, 4 gigs of RAM, NVIDIA GeForce 8600 GT with 256 megs of VRAM, and it's running Yosemite. Now, people don't realize it, but Macs of this age can run Yosemite. Actually, the Mac of uh, 2007, mid-2007, I believe that one can run Yosemite, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Hang on one second while I change the battery. Uh, so I changed the camera battery. So I thought today I would show you guys how to install Windows XP or Windows Vista on a computer of this age without needing Leopard because Leopard is the last well Snow Leopard is the last version of Mac OS X that supports installing Windows XP or Vista on a separate partition with Bootcamp if you try to put the XP disk into Yosemite and install it uh, it won't let you without a little trick that I found out. So today we're going to install Windows XP on this computer. And it's going to be uh, a lot of fun and Windows XP will run amazingly well on this computer. Because I didn't tell you guys but this computer has a 500 gigabyte SSD. So this thing will fly. So let's get started. The first thing we got to do is insert our Windows 7 disk. Windows 7. Now, why are we inserting the Windows 7 disk? Uh, turns out I do have a disk in the DVD drive. It's a blank CDR. So, why are we installing why are we inserting the Windows 7 disk into the Mac if we're going to be installing XP or Vista. Now, you know, you're probably thinking, why, do we, why would we install XP or Vista these days? Well, Vista and XP, to me, are very nostalgic operating systems. And some people have programs and hardware that only runs on XP. So, this is the reason why we're doing it. Um, and a lot of people like XP a lot. And it's like their favorite operating system. Windows operating system. And how great would it be if you could run it on a Mac? So, let's get started. So the first thing we gotta do is open up... The first thing we gotta do is open up Launchpad. And this will work on any Mac made... 2010 and before any Mac made 2010 and before any Mac made after 2010 like 2011 and after this process will not work you won't be able to install Windows XP on your Mac so go to other and then open up bootcamp and the other way of doing it if you don't have launchpad 
you can go into Macintosh HD applications and then you go down and you go to utilities and then you open up boot camp assistant and here I'll show you what happens if you put the Windows XP disk into the computer and you try to install it um here there's the XP disk it's a DVD-R all my disks I copied my Windows 7 disk when I first bought it and I slipstream service pack 1 and I copied my XP disk original service pack 0 and or service pack 1A or whatever it was and I installed service pack 3 onto the disk so that's why I have a rewritable but also my XP disks are pretty damaged so this is what happens if you put in the XP disk and you try to run bootcamp So there's the XP disk. So you click continue. Don't download the software from Apple because that software is only for Windows 7. And the only option says install Windows 7. If you try clicking next, it says an installer just could not be found. And no matter how much you try it, we're gonna let you. So what you have to do is pop in, take out the XP disk put in the Windows 7 disk and you're also another disk you're gonna need is a Snow Leopard disk you're going to have to have a real Snow Leopard disk from Apple they sell them on eBay really cheap and they also sell them on uh, on what they sell them from Apple right currently at this time you can call Apple 1-800-MY-APPLE Ask to speak to someone in Mac sales and they'll ship you a Snow Leopard disc for $20. And it's the full retail copy. So then you just hit install Windows 7 and there's Windows 7. And see, it lets you continue. Now I'm going to divide it equally. And then I'm going to click install. And it's going to partition the disc. And when it restarts, hold down the option key. It's very important that you hold down the option key when it restarts. If you don't, you won't be able to eject the disk and, uh, and put in the XP disk. Um, so let it do its thing. Uh, it's partitioning my disk right now. I don't know if you guys can read that. By the way, I film in 1080p. I import it into Final Cut Pro 10. And I edit it together in Final Cut Pro 10. I make the titles in Photoshop CC. And I make the motion graphics in motion 5 that's how I make my videos so that's how um, I make my videos so once it restarts you gotta be quick you gotta hold down the option key just hold it down keep holding it keep holding it until you see all your discs and the DVD okay now you see Macintosh HD recovery 10 to 10 to 3 and Windows so just eject the Windows disk. You can eject it on an Intel Mac. And this will only work on an Intel Mac. It will not work on a PowerPC Mac. And you pop in the Windows XP disk. And watch what happens. It's really exciting. Well, not that exciting, but it's pretty cool tricking uh, Mac
they think it can boot. And by the way, if you have a Mac that's older, well, I'll wait. See, Windows. And you go to the right, and you just either press Enter or you click on Windows. And now it will boot from the XP disk. And I'm telling you, all your drivers will work fine. The only thing that's probably not going to work if you have a Mac that was made after Snow Leopard. If you have a Mac that was made after the initial release of Snow Leopard, after 10.10.3, .10 then the, the thing that's not going to work is your graphics card. But it's very easy to go to the vendor's website. Like if you have a MacBook from mid-2010, like my white MacBook, it has an NVIDIA 320M. Um, that graphics card is on the NVIDIA website. So you just have to go to NVIDIA's website and download the driver from NVIDIA's website. And it will install the graphics driver. And you'll have the you know, latest and greatest graphics driver from NVIDIA plus the Apple support like the bootcamp support and everything it will work um, we have done this before on a mid 2010 MacBook a mid 2009 MacBook and a mid 2009 MacBook Pro and a and this MacBook I haven't tested it on here but I'm just assuming it's gonna work and I'm videotaping it as I'm testing it and uh, most likely it will work. So I'm gonna pause the camera here until something exciting happens. All right, I just found my Snow Leopard disc 10.6.3. It's the real official one. I'm anti-piracy, so I buy everything. Um, so we're just waiting for this to boot up. So now it's starting Windows, so we were at a good stage here. And then it should show, it usually asks you to light, except the license agreement. But when I strip stream, strip slim, strip slim, I don't know, strip slipped, oh, strip, whatever, when you add service pack 3 to the disk, <laughs> it uh I I had I had it so it automatically accepts the license agreement. Now please please do not select any of these partitions except the one that's labeled boot camp. Please do not select anything but the one that's labeled boot camp. And then click it and then change to NTFS file system quick. Now, when you do this, okay, it will erase that partition and you will no longer have the name Bootcamp anymore. Yes, I have to it. You will no longer have the name Bootcamp anymore. So, if you stop the process in the middle and you want to redo it, I recommend following this guide from the beginning. Again, first remove the bootcamp partition and then you know then you can you can reinstall uh, Windows but I would not reinstall Windows without the bootcamp assistant because it needs to be named bootcamp in order for you to know which partition it is because what if you accidentally selected your Mac partition and you have all your media on there and all your files you would lose everything, right? So just be careful when you do this, because you can accidentally erase your entire hard drive. I plan later on, maybe this week, next week, making a video on Windows Vista. How to install Windows Vista on this old MacBook. And basically, you just install Windows as if you would a real. Windows computer, you know, you just install it, you follow those steps, and then when you get to the desktop, that's when it gets tricky. 
So I'll, I'll cut through most of it, and then you'll know, get to the desktop. And when you get to the desktop, then I'll, when I get to the desktop, I will continue the guide. But right now it's installing, and it's installing pretty quickly because it's 4 gigs of RAM, 2.4 gigahertz Core Duo. You know, it's a pretty decent machine. So, all right, we'll be back. Oh, by the way, every time it restarts, you have to hold down the option key. Every time it restarts. Every single time it restarts, you gotta hold down the option key. And then, you'll see what you have to do next. When you hold down the option key, it shows all your disks, and you gotta choose Windows. Alright, it looks like it defaults to Windows, but it's a good idea to hold down option and make sure that you're booting into Windows. Um, so we'll be back when it's done installing. As you can see, Windows XP is booting up, but it's still the installer. But you just follow the normal Windows XP guide. You know, normal Windows XP installer. Alright, see ya. We'll be back. Uh, I don't remember if I said this, but this will work with XP Home Edition, XP Professional, XP Media Center Edition. The only one it won't work with is the XP 64-bit edition. That one is not supported by um, Apple, um, and I don't think it works, you know. But uh, this thing, uh, it does work well. It runs surprisingly well. Uh, you'll see in a minute. Uh, so, it's going really quickly, you know. I've never seen Windows install this quickly on a PC. It must be the good Mac internals. So, I mean, this is going pretty quickly. The only problem is you only get 32-bit, and also your disk has to be at least Service Pack 2 or later. If you try using anything earlier than Service Pack 2, you won't be able to install the, the drivers for Windows. It just won't work. Um, so just let it do its thing. Uh, I uh, might want to just talk a little more about this. So what we're going to do is when it's done installing, we're going to eject the disk in Windows. And then we'll put in the Snow Leopard disk on, uh, on Windows XP. And believe it or not, the Snow Leopard disk still supports uh, Windows XP. Um, anything after Snow Leopard doesn't support anything but 7 on these old machines but uh, on the new Macs anything made after 2011 pretty much you can run uh, Windows 8 on it I think you can run Windows 8 on 2011 Macs I'm not 100% sure I've never owned a Mac newer than mid 2010 so um, yeah I'm a vintage Mac guy so I really like the old school Macs um, which is why I do a lot of videos on PowerPC, because PowerPC is like, it's really awesome, and I don't know why it's dead, you know, it's, I mean, it shouldn't be dead, it's such a powerful system, you know, but I don't want to ramble on too much, um, let's capture this while this is installing. This is not hard to do at all. This is like beginner to intermediate level of uh, doing this. It's not hard at all. The only thing is if you erase your hard drive, then you have to have another Mac to make a USB drive to boot it up. Okay, so now it's going to restart. And after it finishes this setup screen, then I recommend holding down Option and taking out your Snow Leopard disk. Uh, I can't take it out and hold option at the same time. So, give me a second here. So 
So at this point, I recommend ejecting the Windows disk and then taking out the Snow Leopard disk, which is in this nice little case. Here it is. It's in the original packaging. And take out the Windows XP disk and put in the Snow Leopard disk. Now, Mac is going to want to boot from it, but don't. Don't boot from it. Um, basically, put it in, wait till it reads. Now, why are we using the Snow Leopard disk than the Leopard disk? The Leopard disk has more outdated drivers. So it says Mac OS X installed DVD. We're going to ignore that. We're going to boot from Windows. So let's boot from Windows. With the Snow Leopard disk in. We're going to boot from Windows with the Snow Leopard disk in. I know. Doesn't that seem weird? Um, this is going to be a long tutorial. you know, But we're almost done with it. Look how fast that booted up. Because this thing has an SSD, you know. This is going to be so fast. Whoa. Took about 20 minutes to install. And if you notice, sound does not work. So I don't like to enable automatic updates. I'm going to enter my username. All right. And finish. And then you're done. And now you're you're not done yet. No, we're we're almost done. You're you're almost done with this. So when you get to the desktop, wait till it all boots up. All right. Click computer and then see it says boot camp. And if boot camp does not come up and some crazy thing comes up uh, when you load this up, just right click, just right click on the disk. Oh, you can't right click. So click on the disk and then, uh, where is it? You might need an external mouse. If you have an external mouse that's USB, that's not an Apple mouse, you can right click on the disk and hit open and then go into the bootcamp folder and then launch the main bootcamp program. So basically you install bootcamp. And this is bootcamp from the Snow Leopard disk onto the Mac, onto the Mac, onto the uh, Windows XP. And you'll see it's installing my NVIDIA drivers. But if it does not pick up your NVIDIA drivers and it doesn't recognize them, go to NVIDIA's website and download the NVIDIA drivers. But it should have all the drivers from the 9400M and before. Should be fine. And this will work with MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs, MacBooks. Any, yeah, I think even iMacs and uh, Mac Minis and Mac Pros. But if you have a Mac Pro and you change the graphics card to your own graphics card, you're gonna have to download the driver from the graphics card's website. But this Mac, I mean, this process will work on any Mac from 2010 and before. So as long as your Mac is 2010 and before. And I know you guys, uh, you have a lot of, uh, uh, you, you guys have a lot of old Macs. Well, I don't know that, but I mean, some people still have their old Macs. It's because either they can't afford a new one or they like the old one, you know. And I'm one of those people that likes the old one, you know. It's just, I like old Macs they run really well and plus this Mac it's a MacBook Pro it runs Yosemite but it looks and feels like a power book 
you know, which is why I love it so much. So let this thing install, and then we'll be back when something exciting happens. You know what, I'll just record it, and you guys can see what happens. Um, if you notice, Bluetooth now came up down there. And yes, you're going to have working Bluetooth, you're going to have working Wi-Fi. Basically, everything's going to work, you know. But, I'm thinking, if you have a Mac from 2010, and you have one of those crazy Wi-Fi cards in there, your Wi-Fi might not work. You might have to download it from the PC side of the Wi-Fi card. I recommend Driver Max. Driver Max is an easy way to find unknown drivers. I don't know if they have Mac drivers, but I know this works for all of my Macs. Um, I have a mid-2009 MacBook Pro. I have a mid-2010 MacBook, you know, white MacBook, and I have this Mac. Um, and they all work fine with... Uh, with the snow leopard disc you know if you use the leopard disc I could see why it wouldn't work as well but I know the leopard disc work with my MacBook Pro you know alright cameras telling me to shut up <laughs> um I mean the cameras telling me to be quiet <laughs> so uh let's wait till this finishes when it's done then I will be back with the next screen. All right, let's take a let's pause the camera. It's very important that you don't use the computer when you're installing this software, and also your mouse might stop working in the middle of using this installing bootcamp. So it's very recommended that you don't touch your computer. You don't open up programs while this is installing, because basically it's gonna make everything work. You know. Unless you have like a mid-2010 MacBook or something like that where you don't have a 9400M and you need to download the driver from NVIDIA, but then you're, that's easy enough to do. And I'm going to make a tutorial on how to do this on a mid-2010 MacBook and all the MacBooks that are not supported by this method. Um, it will only be for 2010 MacBooks and 2010 MacBook Pros. Um... So now hold down option and eject the uh, the snow leopard disc because we're done with the snow leopard disc. I know we could do it in Windows, but it's just easier if you do it this way. All right. So eject the snow leopard disc. It's a really long tutorial, sorry about that guys, but uh, it's a good one, in my opinion. Yeah. I'll fix that later. So boot into Windows, and watch how fast it boots up. Hmm. Okay. There it goes. There goes my graphics card. It looks like it worked pretty fast, pretty quick. Um, now Bootcam came up that tells you that it's successfully installed. I can right click now. Um, Multi-touch kind of works. NVIDIA control panel. Um, Bootcam control panel. So this is all the Bootcam stuff. So you can disable the infrared sensor, turn the F1 keys into function keys, trackpad, 
you can enable tap to click dragging power start automatically after power failure you know and here's what's very important if you want Mac to boot up without Windows if you want Mac to boot up first you have to change it in Windows because Yosemite as far as I know will not see the bootcamp partition because it's Windows XP Yosemite basically lying through Yosemite will not see the the XP partition so if you want Mac to boot up first you have to do it in Windows which is kinda strange and if you're ever gonna remove this make sure you set Mac to boot first in Windows before you set it up on uh, on the Mac side um, before you remove it on the Mac side um, so let's see, I'll prove it to you that Yosemite doesn't show up. Actually, I don't quite know because I've never done it on Yosemite. I know I've done this on uh, Lion. And Lion didn't see it, Mountain Lion didn't see it. Never really tried it on Mavericks. Um, yeah, now it's booting up Mac by default because I set it in Windows. You have to set it in Windows. Um... Let's see. Alright, I'll pause the camera while I answer my question. Alright. Now we're back in Mac. And let's see. The moment of truth. I'm ready to release the latest version of iTunes. Let's see the moment of truth to see if it sees the Windows partition. And it does. Okay. So it does see the Windows partition. I didn't think it would. I honestly, I did not think it would. Um, but it does. It sees the XP bootcamp partition, which is strange. But, you know, it works. So you can change it in Mac. But if you're going to remove it, I recommend setting it to Mac to boot first. Because um, it's just important, you know. Um, so that's it. That's the tutorial. So that's how to install Windows XP on a Mac that is not supported. Well, it is supported, but Apple says you can't because you're running the latest operating system from Apple. So I'll just show you one more time how to boot into Windows. So to boot into Windows, you hold Option as you turn on the computer, and then you'll see Windows. And I'll, I'll show you a little trick. This is like after, um, after you do it. It's a good idea to do this. It's a good idea to go to NVIDIA's website and download the latest drivers from NVIDIA. Should work fine. Yeah, Windows XP runs extremely well on this old computer. And. Hang on, the phone's ringing. Okay, so that's how to install Windows XP on an old MacBook. Um, and it works on any MacBook, like I said before, from 2010 and before. As long as your computer did not come with Lion, it should work. I don't know if it will work with computers after 2010 let me know in the comments below um but i think the snow leopard disc your computer had to come with snow leopard for the snow leopard to disc for the snow leopard disc to make you know the function keys work um i don't know maybe it does work on max newer than that i've never tested it you know but uh if you're okay with the function keys not working then you're fine. You can install it on any Mac, you know. But, uh, you know, the function keys are just cool, you know. So, I hope you guys enjoyed my tutorial. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe. Thanks. See ya. Peace.